Um, yeah, so this is, this is what I got down. Basically, if I, if I divide it into a few core areas that are of concern to me, I would say one is reasoning. And so clearly and vividly identify what reason can do fundamental, fundamental methods for thinking well. Confidence, or well, this is longer than just studying, but this is over a longer time frame. But right. uh, confidence in my reasoning as a tool for productive achievement, and then concepts, a newly uh, cultivated intolerance to vagueness. Like I kind of know what I mean, just throwing all that out. Um, and yeah, not being careful what concepts or words I adopt and not just randomly adopting something because it sounds good. And then, yeah, obviously there's this project of trying to clarify uh, common, commonly used concepts and integrate them, connect them. So there's that. And then this is a big one for me, actually. So this relate does relate to ethics. So yeah. think about principles in detail, validate them, understand them. That will be in the epistemology too. And then if I can practice fundamental ones, like that includes virtues, maybe if I understand and, and see how they do help and then to help me make those decisions, like both telescopically and microscopically, and then also thinking weeks, months, years ahead, and then free will too, what I can and cannot control. And then basically to be as indeterminate, independently determined as to the greatest extent possible. <clears throat> yeah. That's what I got down. Thoughts before I delete? Um, that seems pretty good. It is in line with what I thought you wanted, or at least, I mean, it's good that you made explicit what you specifically want to get out of it yeah. or what you specifically want to be learning. That is where I thought you were going with it. It's, and I think that's the right kind of plan for what you've been saying you want to do yeah yeah i'm happy to go into art too and other things but they will be peripheral yes. side type uh issues yes. but even if if i ever did it would still be very applicable to this stuff i mean yeah I always okay i mean i have a whole folder of thinking skills and things that i think would fit into that i've got some more tangential things that are i guess more on the outside of what you want to learn is in comparison to the more essential things, the cognitive organization, conceptual organization, uh, memory, and probably language. Yep. Awesome. Those things I think will be important. And risk and biases, I think actually would be good. I had to get, I should get some more on that. I've okay. got some good resources for that. I did uh, borrow Think in Fast and Slow recently. Gonna, yeah, that's a it. good one. All right. Sure. So this is what I was doing earlier and I just wanted to, there's a couple of things in here. We'll just focus on, uh, and I'll explain the rest later, but so yeah, some things like it's not clear what the, when you're forming the concept goal, like it's not clear where, what are you differentiating from to form the concept goal? And because I don't know what I'm differentiating from, I don't, wouldn't know what the genus of goal is. Uh, and I actually experienced a similar thing with a lot of concepts like, okay, I got intelligence to a kind of ability, but then after that, I'm like, well, what, how do I, is it a capacity? Is it, but a capacity doesn't imply user it was, uh, I, I got kind of, and then memory, like, well, memory is not good because I haven't actually done that. But the point is there's a lot of concepts I'm finding where I just get stuck. If I keep trying to go up the, the hierarchy. Yeah. And same with judgment, for example, like I did judgment and I got to, yeah, I got to something like this, right. This kind of formulation. Yep. And I can see how it's, it's, it actually is pretty cool when you read and then it reminds you of like, okay, there's a standard, uh, it could be a norm. It could be a standard of measurement of like truth or falsehood. And it's cool to have that in mind when you're reading and, and trying to understand something. But then once I did that, I'm like, okay, so is it a kind of, it's a kind of cognition, blah, blah, blah. But then, doesn't judgment depend on thought or isn't it, is it a kind of thought? Like, but then if thought goes to cognition, like something, it just feels like it's all getting messy and I'm not, I'm not really well, I mean, managing to climb up the, isn't thought a mental process of something? Yeah. That's what I thought as well. So thought is a kind of mental process, but then isn't judgment also a kind of thought? Like 
Yeah, Isn't that's there. why it's lower on the hierarchy. Like judgment is everything above it. Judgment is cognition, is mental process, is thought. Oh, you think judgment is a thought? Yeah, if it's in a hierarchy like this, you would be saying it's a type of thought. Oh, okay. If thought is the mental process, and if cognition is a type of thought, or if thought is a type of cognition. How thought is a type of cognition. But I mean, I guess I would say thought is hard. To, I don't always like that concept. Maybe I would put it as the same as cognition. Like they're the synonyms or I th- almost the same word. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think where you can get lost is there's different senses for the words. And so thought could also just be an association. It could be a thing you imagine. And so if, but if you go thinking, then, or like think, uh, then, then yeah, it does. But with the definition I had uh, as um, I initially had it as asking a question, there was an issue with that because that judgment doesn't fit into that necessarily. Like judgment includes thought or thinking, but it doesn't, it's not a kind of thinking. It's not a kind of question you ask. Uh, at least. I would uh, say it is. Right. Well, that's. I, this, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's where I'm going wrong. Like if you're, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not managing to, things aren't fitting together when I climb up the uh, hierarchy basically is what I'm saying. I mean, it's fine what you have here. Like, well, going back to the judgment cognition, mental process, it's just, only a matter of figuring out what is thought like it probably would be fair if you are in your mind referring to things like specifically uh conscious judgments or, or rather conscious um choice for example or or something very deliberate then i would call that maybe a type of um, cognition and that would be fine i think because it's usually you say a thought because you're referring to like a way you've conceived of the world or something like that. Right. And the judgment would be a type of that because it's a specific kind of way of perceiving, perceiving the world. And there's other concepts connected to it, but as a, if you're subdividing mental process, it means it has all the characteristics of the things above it. So judgment has all the characteristics of a mental process. Yeah and everything above it, which would be cognition and thought, whatever order it might be. Yeah. And then what about like something like goal? What what would, what do you think? I sat trying to figure out what's the, this is just another example of like, I couldn't figure out the goal. Well, this yeah. could be a bit tricky, but first we should just, just take a look at the thought here. Like what are some things you call goals? And just give me like one example, even that's fine. Uh, eating healthy food. So that you could say that's a goal. Um, I mean, we could say it's an end point. I mean, that's one well, maybe it's a value. It. I... Perhaps, but if we're, I'm thinking in terms of action or things that oh, you say okay. a goal, like going towards or something like that, it's something. Okay, just to learn uh, to clarify my concepts is a goal. And that could be a goal too. Oh. Yeah. But we could even say maybe I'll give you an example that I'm thinking of like a goal, like my goal is to, I don't know, get to the finish line. I mean, we call that a goal also. Mm. I'll, I'll use that one just because it's less abstract. Yeah. Okay. To consider right now. So your goal is to get to the finish line. Yeah. Or we could even say your goal is to get to the, the apple tree and pick an apple. Like, let's make it even more concrete. Like you're going to go pick an apple. That's your goal. Yeah. I mean, we can think of other animals that do that kind of thing too. You might say that, I don't know, a monkey can walk to the apple tree and pick the apple. We, we might not think of it in the same way because it's not really that they're conceptualizing it, that yeah. goal. I mean, maybe we'll call that, we could distinguish between conceptual goals and something like uh, just desiring something. Right. So, I mean, you can have monkeys. So I might actually divide to like human purpose is usually like, it's supposed to be a human thing, like it's making into a something very specific, like, or very conceptual, a goal. 
could be something like a a dog has a goal of I don't know getting to the treat at the end of the tunnel or getting a treat or something it's not really yep. conceptual it's just a, a thing they seek and even all animals want that right even a jellyfish could have a goal just to I don't know consume energy and so we right. can think of that as like there's living things do things I mean do you say rocks have goals is it a goal of a rock to fall down a mountain if it was dropped okay no something aristotle would consider even like he considered think things like vegetative processes or different processes like this to distinguish like rocks falling or animals seeking food or right. humans seeking goals right. so i mean we could think of there's types of actions that happen because we can distinguish things like going towards like i don't know the rock goes towards the base of the mountain is it because it wanted to or is it what's the difference here between a rock falling down a mountain versus say a person walking down a mountain uh okay so difference? itself itself it's like initiated by the thing that would be so it's something right. to do with that so right. there are some actions that uh are just uh are actions because something else has acted on something and there are some actions that a thing itself initiates because it's alive yeah. see i didn't even it's funny because you can like i can sit there and i know i can give examples of goals but i don't know how i got it and i don't know what the genus of goal is <laughs> it's not yeah it's uh, it's strange um okay it is hard without i could come up with that because i knew about aristotle and he considered it before i knew his reasoning kind of vaguely at least that there's some aristotelian reasoning going on here i knew about like purpose and like uh, things like that like how he distinguished it and that helps it's hard to say how do i come up with it how'd he come up with any examples well it's kind of hard to say but it's more a thing like if you see other people do it then you get maybe in the habit of how to do it yourself too right just by so observation a goal would then be wasn't that the definition of a goal like that that's what differentiates it from the genus so it's maybe the genus is action but the 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 goal the definition of goal is something like self-initiated uh action um with some yeah, that i don't could know be fair. something like that that's and then but then what do you when, when you're come when you're coming up with the concept goal the i keep going back to this fruit example that we did and i was like well you have to know that there's a thing called vegetable produce there's just produce before you can get the concept fruit but and so i don't know maybe that's causing me trouble here with goal like okay the diff you you notice that you're differentiating from other actions basically that so you know and there's goal which is the self-initiated one and there's like actions that happen because something is like pushed uh you know yeah, like I mean, uh ways that could have like well you recognize awareness in something that you know dogs are aware rocks are not are they animate or are they not clearly that's not a type of goal or action here but it's a related tangential concept sort of like habitation is related to furniture right. we need to know habitation we know furniture but habitation isn't a type of furniture or even a thing it's a, i mean it's a part of a wider web of concepts for sure i mean then that gets into harder things about the discussion of what are goals and what do you need to know or what are the other considerations like all the other aspects besides the essential right. it's connected to like well awareness is part of it it's not essential maybe but yeah you can't have a goal without awareness it's a, a present characteristic even i guess you could say it's a characteristic that would also be required but which is different than a conceptual hierarchy i mean we can get into other hierarchies i guess and that could be really tricky and complicated. But it's strictly speaking, if you just want to, you can just relate the concepts to one another. If you want to go into a web of stuff, well, that would be more if you want to fill in the concept better, or you want to have a more, a stronger sense of yeah. what all these things are, you'll find the other connections. Right. To like strengthen the bonds, I guess you could say. Right. Yeah. I mean, for some things I want to, if I'm not clear on them, I think I should, I should do that. But so would you say goal would go to then something like action? Would that be the yeah 
Yeah. Okay. I think that's fair. I mean, there's options here, also depending on your context of knowledge, but that sounds totally reasonable to me. Yeah. Based on everything we've talked about. Yeah. It sounds okay. good. But I, I, you know, I think that that is pretty interesting because if you're holding that in mind, like when I'm thinking of purpose and I imagine a rock falling and I imagine like, okay, it's action. I know going further up the hierarchy, it ends up in action. Like you've got that as a constant reminder when you think of purpose, which is, is, uh, is pretty cool. So uh, the other thing is there was this I found, I was just going through some of the ITO questions that I thought might be relevant to me and she talks about this was a section on implicit concepts and i i noted that the way she defined it um she gives an example later but the relevant part is here is the implicit is that which is available to your consciousness but which you have not conceptualized mm -hmm. and so i guess you don't that's not like a genus differentiate definition as far as i can tell um I say so so, I mean, I guess the point is I don't really need to, as long as I get some, maybe some characteristics that that's fine. Like that, cause she's obviously, there's a lot of things even she defines that are just not really like value is that which one acts to gain or keep. Like that's not a genus differential definition. Um, and no. so I guess, so you don't really need it, right. Even though there's a whole section in Ito, uh, I guess, you, you can be kind of like non-precise maybe or whatever on with some things, right? The like way I have thought about it is that you should be able to create it. And if you can't, then something's off about what you're understanding so far. Right. I mean, I haven't defined every single thing I ever learned, but I think if you ask me to define it, then I should be able to, but then if I find I can't, then say, well, I probably need to go study more now or learn right. more now. Right. Like this, like, okay. I would ask her, like, okay, that's what she means. Like, she means by identify ask her, can you please be more precise? She probably could. Whereas, so what's the genus differentia? She probably could. Just think a little bit about it. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. That should be good enough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I do find, sometimes I'll do go into something and I don't, I might not know. I don't, I don't know if it's limited knowledge. Maybe I don't have the concept. Um but it, it does, it, like I can spend a long time thinking about, okay, okay, what's the genus differential? And I don't know. And because if you take something over from someone else, like if you take value over from someone else and I'm like, it doesn't occur to me that, oh yeah, you had to come up with value by noticing that some things act and some things act like in a self-initiated way. You may not have never ever formed that yourself. You may have just taken it over. And so you won't be able to come right. up with, you won't know what the genesis is in that case, which was me. Right. Yeah. And so, then you take the time to validate it or integrate it or whatever that right. might be in. The genus differential thing usually helps you to integrate, I find, to make sure where does it fit within your other concepts. And when you make it fit, that's the big first step, I guess. Right. Okay. Uh, cool. So, I mean, the takeaway there is like you should be able to, but obviously, I mean, I agree with you. It's not possible. Like, how many words do we have? Right. Um, yeah. The good news is it's not that many concepts, but given how long it can take to formulate a definition, there's no need for intense precision unless it's part of some, you know. Well, I mean, every process. word is a concept. It's only more than one concept. Is is sometimes a concept uses more than one, or I'm getting it backwards. Sometimes a word is used for multiple concepts. So yeah. there's so many, like every single thing used, single word is a concept at least. By Rand's definition. Yeah, although like even the concept although, right? Any there's a lot of or right, there's a lot of it basically words that uh refer to concepts True. that are just not particularly difficult or intense. They're just some kind of grammatical filler. And there's metaphors as well, and there's words that refer to uh, you know, adjectives or whatever that are just describing some characteristic. And so you don't, there's a, there's definitely having sat, I can see that there's a lot that's just repeats. So I, you know, I see it's you. not essential. Anyway, we will go on to the next.
thing I was uh, so I tried to yeah problem I try to go okay well what is I was just curious because it came up a lot in the text I was reading and I asked myself like what is an what is a problem and as an exercise I tried to do this and I found again I couldn't I'm like well I know what it refers to but why can't I figure out what the genus is um, and I got you know here's some uh, let's get rid of this thing you know one characteristic as it relates to personal values uh, or values require certain actions to be attained or kept problems refer to some kind of ignorance about what's required to attain a value or a lack of skill required to implement the actions or blah 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 so I know like I've got characteristics right yeah but if I get to genus I'm like I is that a is that a, that's not a goal attainment isn't a concept I don't know if that's a concept but any um, goal would be enough, I think. It just, but I don't think it's. Wait, I think goal would be a fine if you're looking for a genus, but I'm not sure it is even the one you want here because I don't think so. It's tricky because it's maybe a concept that's more like a negative, like to find forgetting. It's like the opposite of remembering. It, you can't even count the concept unless you have. Ah, uh, okay. Remembering, but. But you're not really saying like a forgetting is a it's a lack of something usually. Right. And a problem is usually it might be tricky. It's not like you're saying it's a lack of it's like an obstacle. But what is an I mean, I guess it's a type of an obstacle is a type of problem. Or maybe there's synonyms. For yeah, that. I think obstacle is just using the see, that's why I was saying like because obstacle is a is usually in the context of something you jump over and it's just as it you, you it's basically it's the same thing as a problem and that's like repetition of the concept oh uh, we i would say it's a type of an obstacle is a type of problem right Definitely. right that would be fine but um i put down to note concepts of relationships because maybe there's some clues in there on how to get the genus but yeah like i got okay I wrote down all these random ones and I go, and then I identified the problem. The problem is lack of di enzymes or whatever. And then I wrote, the problem is the illness. And I got to, the problem is lack of knowledge about steps required to value attainment. And that's how I figured out, all right, yeah. So it's a, there, there's usually something that is creating difficulty in attaining a goal or keeping a value. And then I got near relatives, I'm hungry would like to eat a banana it's on my table but there's no problem i just take the <laughs> take the banana and eat it i need to be protected against the sun no problem i just put on sunscreen so it, it's referring to like a value attainment being frustrated or something so i got that but i couldn't formulate it into like you know i can this go reminds goals me, this reminds you a joke well not even a joke it's in my dad would say a lot <laughs> like there are no problems there are only opportunities and it's, it's like, it bothers me, but I don't even <laughs> think it's true, but it's like, it's kind of like this problem here. Like, when is it a problem versus just a new situation? I mean, maybe we could think of it as like, I don't know, causality maybe, because a problem is like, what causes something negative or a barrier to attainment? Yeah, I think that's a characteristic. Hard. Yeah, what the thing that causes, uh, I could put that, that, I'm putting that down as a characteristic. The thing that causes what to attainment? Barriers. Uh, but that's a problem. But that, see, then that's the thing that causes a problem for attainment, which is what a problem is. So it's circular. Uh, I got, I did that before. The thing that causes? Barrier, obstacle, all those are just restating it in the. It causes a, a negative. I, I I just did here. Um, it refers to the ignorance about what's required to attain a value or the lack of skill required or something which is acting as a, uh, well, thread is also kind of circular. Something which is preventing you, which may, I don't know, anyway, whatever. Um, That's getting at it closer, I think. Because, I mean, we are identifying here. I mean... It's related to values, at least, you would think that mm. we have that much here going here. I mean, that's something in common with 
all of these, even maybe the new relatives, there's yeah. some value going on here. Like you want a you want a banana, or you want a mango. Like both of those are like values. You you want the mango. Um, and there's still things I need to do to get it, right? Like if I'm hungry, it's not like there's no action required or no knowledge required. It's just, it's easy. And same with putting on sunscreen, the action is easy. So I don't refer to it as a problem, but there's, there's that similarity in the sense that, you know, like let's say I do want to eat mangoes, but I have what's called fructose intolerance. That's the problem. Yeah. But then the solution might be, okay, well you can find probiotics that replace the relevant enzyme. That's the knowledge that so but it's more complicated than just moving your hand and lifting a banana on the table yeah, so you might be able to say uh, it's a continuum that there's a, a scale here of difficulty that leads it from it is a problem to it's not a problem right like yeah i mean it's a problem to get the banana in the sense that you need to expend energy to pick up the banana but it's not a problem in the sense that it's almost no it's very little effort thinking or physically to do that but to then say if it were it's a problem to climb up the tree to pick the banana well that's completely different like it's a problem because of how much effort you need to go climb up the tree and you might so you, be able to think of it that way so you think it's a kind of measurement or a of difficulty yeah and that would be the measurement in common between i guess bananas or between the near relative and the concept. But, I, I, but I, I would say that there's, there's something missing with looking at it that, that way, which is that the, when you use the term problem or the concept, you are referring to a thing you can take, like a specific isolated thing you can take action to solve. So like in the case of the mango, okay, there's a, the problem is a specific thing, like have, get these digestive enzymes or whatever. And then by using the concept, it lets you think in those terms of like, okay, there is a specific thing that I need to understand its nature and then take action to remove it or deal with it appropriately. And whereas if I just deal with, um, if I just treat the concept of our problem as difficulty of goal attainment, it, I, it misses that. Do you know what I'm saying? I think so. Um, I think just the difficulty here, the problem here is that we're, there's so much, it's, I think we're trying to consider there's a range of considerations that make something more difficult to uh, attain. I mean, we are identifying maybe a general, more general category is not really goal attainment so much as the concept is measuring this degree of, or the, rather the CCD is some measure of, um, d of effort. The CCD is effort, we could say. And what concept is subdivided by effort? Like you subdivide things into problems or- I, I wouldn't say the CCD is effort. Well, okay. I'll tell you why, but go on. I'll, I'll, why I'm, what I'm thinking, and you can tell me if I'm. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm saying a CCD is exactly. effort. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of what concept has a distinguishing feature as um, effort. So, uh, okay. I mean, problems are type of spending effort, or problems require spending effort to overcome, same as obstacles. Right. And you measure the difference in terms of difficulty. Uh, a wider concept might be um, that's hard. I, mean, I don't want to say it's just an action, or rather, it's not just a a barrier. We're trying to think in terms of it's a problem. It's hard to go from there trying to find something in between action and, and problem. Yeah, I wonder, actually, I think I'm, I'm actually changing my mind. I think maybe you're right. So one CCD is effort, but I wonder if there's something else too. Because uh, yeah. yeah, problems require more effort to expend than 
attaining something where there's no problem, but um, um, anyway. I, the, planning maybe? I don't know planning has to do with it because to have a problem, you need to have a, pl a plan in the first place. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Because something, was when you have a, a problem, it's like you're identifying some process, some step in the process of a bunch of goals to to get there like right you don't know how to get to the goal or something right. like that i'm not sure if i can have a concept there we probably could specify it better but that, yeah it's stuck there oh I'll, I'll come back to this i think the reason why i wanted there's some words that are, are noted down like problem that i'm noting i put them under like psychological concepts not because problem is psychological, but because it's often involved in my thought. So I'll say, oh, that's a problem. But if I identify what it is in essential terms, I may find that, um, especially those concepts that I frequently use in my thinking or to deal with life, I may find that if I recall the relevant information, like, oh, okay, problem involves knowledge, involves, um, uh, I forgot the word effort. And then uh, my th my thinking on the actual topic will change because I was like, okay, well, what can I do to gain more knowledge or what can I do to, that's just a, a sense that, you know, if I start organizing those concepts, the ones I use in my thought a lot, I may benefit in that way. That's why I put this one down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a good one. Uh, I found even understanding so far has helped, like, even though I don't have the concept that precisely like going okay well it refers to um knowing what the the referent of the um concept is or the proposition meaning examples being able to point to examples it refers to knowing the context it also may refer to identifying what concept is relevant to this specific concrete now suddenly like i'm not just going did i understand that or not i can ask myself like okay how about all those things that are important to understanding how do i rank on those so I can see how that uh, got me motivated to like do more. But uh, this one, I don't have. I got the dictionary definition and it used to be apparently the origin, the etymology is question. Now, it came from one of Aristotle's books uh, called Pro Problem. Interesting. Question proposed for academic discussion. See, Aristotle. Very interesting. Yeah. Puzzle, riddle. So sometimes that gives clues for, anyway, I'll come back to this. But, thing, it was yeah, a literal on. translation from, from Greek. Uh, oh, that's well, let's one. have a look. Literally a thing thrown out or put forward. To it's a title of a work forward. by Aristotle. Question proposed for academic discussion. Originally it was just a title of his book. Yeah. Yeah, question proposed for a solution, set task. Scroll down more. Difficult or demanding. Difficult or demanding. Well, so there you go. We were talking about the difficulty. Right. Effort. Maybe that's, yeah. Unwelcome, harmful. Yeah, I was trying to identify that too, because you did identify a degree of difficulty, but then we're also situation maybe maybe it's a type of situation we could say i wonder and we identify something undesirable wrong or harmful right but you need to you, you need to figure out what the like you said the c maybe i i stopped thinking in terms of ccd maybe i should start looking at that again but identify the genus in order for me to be able to then differentiate it right otherwise because if i don't have the genus if i can't figure that out then how did i even get it in the first place i don't know um I, i'm trying to think a barrier is an appropriate genus there i would say barrier to me just sounds like barrier is a if you look at the etymology, it's probably actually a barrett, like a, a thing that people put up on roads. 
And so then it, that would just be a, a metaphor and a substitute for a problem. Same thing. You know what I'm saying? I wrote that it's down as like a synonym. A, I wrote down a whole like a, bunch. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It's almost like a type of uncertainty. Problem. I don't know, like a beaver could say, I mean, even beavers face problems. Like beavers problem is that they need to make a house on the river. They need to make a dam on the river. And they have to figure it out. And so I'm trying to think even animals solve problems to some extent. Like birds make nests. They have to solve the problem of where to put their eggs. Right. Things like that. So I mean that's maybe something else to consider. Well, that's not just maybe not just a human thing here. I would say in the case of birds, maybe the problem, like you could be even more precise and say, okay, the problem is that if they lay eggs on the ground, snakes will eat them. So they have to find a way to put the problem is the problem is snakes or something like that. Okay. What's the solution? Put them in trees. Okay. But the problem is how can you put them in trees? Okay. So the problem is there's no stable place in a tree to put them. So we must build a nest, that kind of thing, you know, perhaps, but yeah, that kind of thing. Like you could say the pro that's the problem. And then, so the problem is something about, um, the problem is snakes. The desire. And then the problem after that, I'm just making this up because for birds it will vary maybe, but the problem maybe is snakes or lizards. And so what's the solution? Put it in some trees, but the problem then becomes how can you put an egg? Like the tree, the, the tree can't hold an egg. So then the, the solution is build a nest in a tree. Yeah. So at all, all along the way, the problem is one, a snake. So it's a threat to your, your values or the, the goals or whatever values. And then in the tree, it, the, it, the the problem is not it's not so much a threat as um as uh i don't know what that one is but yeah the snake is the threat but the tree is more something else but it's still a problem you might be able to just call it situation or context yeah something like that because it's not the specific thing as much as the surrounding considerations Like the problem is the situation. That's the problem is. And all types of situations can be differentiated in terms of, I mean, you could, you could differentiate different situations as one of goal attainment and effort. So we could say that a problem is a high effort um, goal seeking, or it's applied to things that require high effort to succeed at a goal. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if we think that the essential or the fundamental in problem is effort, then yes. But I, I wonder if there is I'm just- um, Effort and goal. Because you could have like, I'm just thinking of a Okay, let's say I, I want to go for a 10K run. That's a lot of effort, but it's not a problem. Or if I want to, yeah. you know, go to gym and and uh, lift a lot of heavy weights, that's not a problem until I'm trying to do something that I haven't done before and requires like a lot of, you know, technique. But it's still effort, you know, like I can still do something right. that that's is fine. not a problem that requires a lot of effort, less maybe even more effort than like, um, I guess it depends what you mean by effort, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to look for a counter for it, effort being the essential. That's why I use two, I think an essential or, or we could, the differentiating thing is that it's high effort and um, the high effort goal seeking or a situation where high effort must be put in to achieve a goal and i think you can have an and in there because rand even herself said you could distinguish between uh with the ccd and an additional characteristic she said that could be that would work too we right. subdivide a concept so if we're subdividing situation that would be perfectly valid under her conception and i would agree i mean at least what we talked about before it doesn't seem like there's only ever one thing. It's just a very limited number of differentiations. Like here, we're just using two, like the 
effort and the fact that goals are involved. Can you think of a, a situation where there's a problem that requires less effort than a situation where there's no problem? Well, I'd say low effort is no problem. Any situation where there's low effort, then by definition, it's not a problem, which is really like the banana example, low end, like low effort. So it's not a problem. Right. Mm. Effort is mental and physical energy or, or either. Or either, yes, either one. Because we've abstracted away the actual particular measurement of like the type of effort. We, we could, of course, differentiate in terms of like effort, in terms of burning calories, effort, in terms of steps in a mental process, or effort could be number of steps it takes to, like physical steps it takes to get somewhere. Or we could just think in the effort in terms of how much time it takes to write an essay. Like you, you abstracted away the, the means which it's performed. Right. Uh but what about that example of, um, you know, okay, I'm going to go for a 20K run. I, I, I just lifted it. Let's go 20K. And I know it's a lot of effort, but it's, I don't, is that a problem? I don't think of that as a problem, but I, I would think of like, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm just trying to think. So, okay, 20K run, a lot of effort, but then let's say, uh, I'm missing the enzymes for the mango and, but I, I just call the doctor and speak to it. And the doctor's like, all right, here, here, let me prescribe these enzymes. And that that's low effort, but that's a problem. I, I'm not sure if I'm just playing around with words here, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just trying would to say it's not a problem because it's so easy. It's not a problem. I, mean, I would almost think of it. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That's not, it a problem. is that easy. So, right. And I would just tell someone like, why are you worried about that? It's not a problem. So he said, I yeah. don't want to call the doctor. And so blah, blah, blah. And you remind them like, well, it's not okay. that hard. You're not mm. going to put in much effort. It'll be easy. Yeah. Okay. I got to sit and think about this one a bit more. Yeah. That would be a matter of like applying the content in a way that could even be motivate yourself. Like realizing when there isn't much effort, should you even call it a problem? And it could yeah, be. And that's, that's why I'm also looking for other relevant, seeing if there's other relevant uh, essentials or something else that's that will help guide because I can see how effort is in, can be in, involved and I can't really think of yeah I can't think of an example where it's not now where effort where you put in where you have to put in effort and it's not a problem hmm. yeah and especially the goal oriented part too we have to have in there we might need to distinguish that more but I think goal right. oriented high effort in or a situation which requires high effort to attain a goal. But there's no, so where I, I agree with that. That makes sense. Like, so goal orientated situation that requires high effort. Let's just go with something like, even though that's not perfect. Yeah. Then, um, you know, where I have trouble with is like, there's no, like is goal orientated situation a genus? Like, is that a concept? That's like, a, no, this would be this. Well, you know situation would be the genus. I would argue. Uh, I would say situations uh, or context or whatever word you prefer. I like the word situation personally. Yeah. Okay. But you might think hmm. of a better one. Like in my understanding, the situation works well. And this is the way I use the word situation. What I understand about the concept situation. I mean, of course we can get into that, but as far as just this organization, it looks fine. If you want yeah. to be analyzed situation, go ahead. But I think as far as problem goes, this this is good. Mm. Or it's a good start to making it very clear. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, so we'll leave that. I think that's go to one more question before we, yeah, we can do one more principles. Um, that one, this one's hard. 
we, well, we've we've sort of touched on this before, but yeah. this is where I have trouble a lot. So he's saying once a man abandons principles, once he dismisses his naive generalities, such abstract concepts as ownership, property rights, honesty, justice, there is no way to decide concrete cases except by arbitrary feeling, either by his own feeling or that of a group which he identifies. And I'm like, okay, well, let me just try get my head around this. I sort of get it. Like if you throw out property rights, I mean, I, I get that if I download something, I'm like, well, property rights is a thing you try and get it. Like you, you pretend you're with it and then you steal when you can, if you don't get caught. But then what I don't get is like, can't someone go, okay, let, let's take this line of reasoning. This is because this is a thought process. I wouldn't say this is, to me. It doesn't seem like whim. Uh, it's not enforced. Most people do it. It'd be impractical for them to chase most people. I know I get that that's concrete, but it's still like a thought process to me. Um, so where is the feeling, where is the whim involved in like someone who's, still, you know, you don't um, need to steal music today because of Spotify, but people used to download it. Right. And that was, that, that's sort of the thought process. And I don't get where, what, what's, how, how is that wrong? Uh, the problem here might be the way you say abandons principles. I think Rand might mean it in the more general sense that you're abandoning any kind of principle and you seem to think of it abandoning the correct principles. Yeah, you you might be abandoning the correct principles, but it doesn't mean you've abandoned principles. If you've done that, I mean, you might think that download, that illegally downloading is a, a in, invalid concept that there's no such thing as stealing or some, some people really argue that there's no such thing as intellectual property Therefore, it doesn't matter. We're not abandoning anything. There okay. was nothing to violate. Or you might have these like you know, principles of a thief, maybe, but you can label those for sure as yes, some principles. principles. You've right. abandoned ownership and property. But I'm not sure we could say that they've abandoned all thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess, but that is that would be the situation for most people. They don't um, I don't know if they're even a criminal or a thief, like, I don't know if they're saying I'm throwing out all generalities or principles. They'll still, they'll still have, maybe they're just improper principles. Yeah. I always, I think it is hard to understand what like, to, Rand might be too quick to use those words actually say, oh, it's when it's like, well, it's wrong. I agree. But is it meant, is it really mindless? Right. I don't think yeah, it's violence. It's just, we could trouble, wonder. Yeah. And if they did see it was by when it's like, well, I felt like it, then, well, sure, then yeah. Yeah. condemn them like Rand did. But other than that, we're at least get a bit more information. Agree. Okay.